All right, Cubs. It's Oddly Otter. How you guys been? Same. Cold. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, today I want to talk about Steam Remote Play. Now, some of you guys probably are aware of this, but I've recently been playing around with it, and I thought it's really cool. So I thought, let me show you a video explaining it a little bit. So here we go. On my uh, PC, you can see Spyro being played right now. That's happening via Steam. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm just going to take a quick step over to another room. Now, in this room, if I just pan over the camera to my TV, you can see the exact same game being played. And I'm just going to crouch down here and you'll see there's my little TV box that you guys have seen another video about that's on this channel if you want to check it out. And here's my controller. So just a quick run around and there we go. You can play Steam games on your TV. Let me jump over back into the study quickly. Okay, so the game's paused and we are now back in my study. Now, not only can you play games on your TV using Steam Remote Play, you can use it to play games on your phone. In fact, here's a clip that my wife took while I was filling around trying to figure this out. Hey, you're playing games. Aren't you supposed to be shaving? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I suppose I should, should go do that. Yep, so there's an unshaved otter who ended up playing Spyro again on his phone using the same system um, while I was trying to figure this out. And that's very cool, I must admit. Not only that, but here's another one of a really cold day, me trying to do it using an underpowered laptop. Right, so remote play, we, we've mentioned it on a TV, we've mentioned it on uh, phones, but like the prime example of why this is so cool is today it is currently eight degrees, it's very cold. I'm currently sitting in my bedroom I may or may not be in my pajamas. That's don't judge me, okay? I'm not gonna go sit in my study to play games because it's cold. But I can sit here in my bed with my controller in my hand and let me flip the screen so I can show you what's going on. And here on this laptop, which is obviously somewhat underpowered to be able to play it, I can sit here and I can just go, I want to play Spyro. And that underpowered laptop that you just saw is going to now stream the game with my PC. I've got the controller in my hand, I've got the blankie, I'm nice and warm, and I have the comfort of being able to play my games here on my bed. So by now you've already seen me using remote play to play Spyro on my TV, on my phone, and on a laptop that specwise wouldn't be able to play it. So let's actually now take the time to Jump over to my PC where I can explain to you how it works and how to set it up. And um, oh, by the way, did I explain that you don't actually have to own the game on Steam to use Remote Play? Let's have a look at this. So here we are on my gaming PC. Um, let's just jump straight into Steam. So that's where you can pretty much see most of this stuff, right? So let's jump over the screen here. You'll see in Steam there's actually a page that explains all of this. I'll leave a link directly in the description if you guys want to check this out. There's there's two modes when it comes to remote play, remote play together and remote play anywhere. Remote play together is very cool, but uh, we'll discuss that in another video. We're discussing remote play anyway now, right? So scroll down, see all the information. Essentially the way this works is you there's uh, an app that we need to get, right? So the app is called Steam Link. Um, here at the bottom of the page, you can see it. You just go to the Android store, you search for Steam Link, I'll do that over here, and you click install. You can see it's already installed on my device. By the way, helpful tip, I don't know if people know this, but um, if you go to the Play Store on your phone, or I'm sorry, if you go to the Play Store on your PC, you can then actually search for the app you want and click install and actually send it to the device you want. So you don't have to pull out your phone for it. You can literally just click a link and there you go. Anyway, here we go. Click on that, get your Android app or get your Apple app if you're so inclined. Install the app and then you have to connect it to your PC. So I'm gonna jump onto my phone and I will get the app installed and set up. A few moments later. So hopefully I figured out how to get this recording on here so we can overlay it nicely and it looks all nice and pretty to you guys. But once you start the app, it really just says, welcome to Steam Link. You go ahead and you click get started. It will then go ahead and ask you, do you have any controllers? How do you want to set this up? So 
If you have a Bluetooth controller, some of them you can pair directly with your Android devices. That works fine. You can also plug in some controllers, and I do that with my controller. That nice green one that you've probably seen in some of my videos already um, works on my phone, work, which is kind of odd, but it also works on the Android TV box, which is how we play games using the controller. You can also just uh, use control, touch control, which is what I'm doing here. Now, as long as you're on the same network um, as your PC, so as long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi or however you're connected to the same network and your Steam is running, it'll do a quick scan and it will go and give you a list of all the computers that are currently running Steam. You're then going to click on the PC that you want, which I'm doing on my phone right here. And then on the screen, on your gaming PC, it pops up a little box and says, hey, type this number in just to make sure that we're pairing the right ones together. So I'm going to do that now quickly. You click on OK. And then it does a quick test connection. Make sure that this is able, able, capable. You know what I'm trying to say. Make sure it works. So a quick, quick test. And now I've got a thing that says, hey, we've done a bandwidth test. It should all be good to go. Boom. OK. And now if I click on start playing on my phone, it's going to connect to Steam. My PC is going to jump and do some weird things. Um, let me see if I can show you how that looks. So on my phone, it tells me how this is how you use this program. I've got a quick overlay here showing me um, touch controls. And you can see here I'm actually using my phone to jump around and choose a game that I want. And then I would just choose the game that I want and it would start streaming to my phone as you've seen in these videos already. Pretty cool. So that's it. That's how you get your Steam Link app installed. You run it, you make sure they're paired together, and then it it does the things that you want it to do. So you can stream it via your, again, Apple device, your um, Android device. And there's actually something I noticed here on the screen that says Raspberry Pi, which I find very interesting. I don't have one of those to test it with, but that could be very cool because that's a very underpowered little credit card size PC that you can hook everything up and you could just stream everything through that. If I had one of those, I would test it. I don't. So if you have one and you've tested it, let me know down in the comments. I would be keen to see how how that actually performs. Just one or two other quick tips here before we move on to um, some other parts of how we, we can use this. If for some reason that pop-up doesn't come up on your screen and you're trying to figure out why it doesn't want to pair, go to Steam at the top of your actual Steam application, click on Settings, click down on Remote Play, and make sure you've got Enable Remote Play ticked. It is on by default from what I know, but just in case, and also, you can see here all the devices that you've actually got paired with it. Remove them, change them, and do some adjustments in terms of performance if you really want to. So I keep this on balanced. I haven't really changed anything here, but this is pretty much where you can change stuff if you want to. Um, but that would be it. Then you would instantly be using your gaming PC to do all the rendering for this. That's how it works. And it then just basically casts it or streams it to your phone. You don't have to be on the same Wi-Fi network if you want to play games. I've tested that as well and it works fine. I can use my mobile data and as long as they've already been paired in the past, I can play games fine. So that's a helpful tip for those of you who want to play some intense games during your lunch break. Anyway, let's move on to some some other parts, shall we? So there's just two more things that we're going to talk about in this in this video, right? The first one is not actually remote play specific but it is a very helpful little tip that's a bit of a quality laugh thing and if you use it you can actually expand your remote play um, abilities and I'll explain that as we do it. Uh, the second thing is remote play specific but to test that I want to use this Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice which you can see is actually still downloading and I want to use Black Mesa which is a Half-Life game and I am a big fan of Half-Life so I'm very keen to have these games once they finish downloading I'll come back and I'll film that part where we talk about playing those games using an underpowered laptop. The first thing that we're going to talk about, um, like I said, it's not remote play specific, but it is super helpful. Um, and that is adding non-Steam games to your library. So as you can see here, I don't actually own the Bioshock game. If I go here and I can do a show you in the actual library, well, actually in the store, that it's not listed as one that I own but you can add non-Steam games into your library so they are available here in your drop-down. How do you do that, Tyrone? Tell me. Well, it's a good thing you're watching this video. You click on games and you go to the option that says add a non-Steam game to 
to my library. When I click on this, it does a scan to see what's actually installed on your computer. Once it finishes doing that scan, you can ignore anything here unless that game actually is in this list. If it is, you would just tick it. Um, but I'm going to click on Browse. And it's, you actually just have to navigate to where the game executable is. So mine is already here. It's in my games folder under Bioshock, etc., etc., etc. You would just have to go find the game executable for the game that you actually want to add. Select it, click on Open, and then you click on Add Selected Program. And there we go, it's on my list. And if I click on play, it will run the game and it will be there. And you can see um, that it's actually gonna be, you'll actually see, see it as a game that's currently running. So if your friends are checking it out, they'll see Bioshock as the game that you're playing. Anyway, we'll exit that. There we go. And the cool thing about this is you can use remote play to play the games that you have added to your library. So it is a little bit of hit and miss because obviously if you're, you've got DRM from the Epic or Origin store on the game, you can't just run it. You would have to have those launchers running as well. But for the example here, Bioshock doesn't have, it's not tied to a launcher because I own the CD in the DVD, the original way. It doesn't, um, doesn't need to do any checks for me to actually just play the game. So I add it to this library. I can then take the game, play it on my phone, on my TV or on my laptop wherever I want, and it would play exactly as it would if I owned the game. The only drawback is I don't get achievements in Steam. But it is still a quality of life thing for me, because I like to add all the games that I actually have installed on my PC down on this list, and then I know by a glance which they, which ones they are, and I can play them. Um, hey, look at that. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice has just finished. So I'm probably going to jump into recording that part of this video. Remote play add non-steam games if you are confused about any of this stuff guys hit me up in the comments and we can talk about talk about it maybe i can help you figure it out so let's now go and we'll set up how we're going to play games like black mesa and hellblade senior sacrifice on an underpowered laptop that can't support it that's the next part of this video the next part of this video that i'm going to film now is a little bit tricky because what i wanted to do is I actually wanted to film both the laptop that I'm going to be streaming to and the gaming PC at the same time. Now, the thing is the laptop doesn't have the same resolution, so if I try and put that into this video, it's already going to be a bit wacky, so I couldn't do it off of the laptop. And then obviously if I'm capturing the gaming PC, you wouldn't see anything on the laptop. So we're just going to point a camera at both of them and I can show what it looks like. Alright, so here you go, you can see there's the, the laptop that we're going to be using to do all of this. And then over here, we're going to just have the um, gaming PC that we're actually streaming this off of. Um, and we're going to be testing this with Hellblade. So, as you saw there just now, a second ago, if I go over here, you can see it's asking me to log in. So I'm just going to click on log in. It's obviously going to need to do a two-factor authentication, so give me a sec to do that. And see, when you actually log in, this pops up on your screen. It says, hey, your other one is ready for, for streaming. So, we're going to hop over to the laptop. Okay, obviously, launching Steam, things pop up as they normally do. And here where things get a little bit different. So I'm going to just go into the library. So what are we going to do? We're going to test this with Bioshock. I just want to do this very quickly with Bioshock and then we're going to jump to another game. Now remember, Bioshock is a game that I don't own on Steam, right? It's a game that I actually own the original disc to. And all we did early in this video is I've taken those type of games and I've linked them to my Steam library using add non-Steam games to library. It's in my list. And because it's in my list here, I can use Steam's remote play to play them. So let's go back to the screen and we can have a look at that. So all I do is I click on stream, preparing, and then you'll see on the actual gaming laptop, the Bioshock splash comes up, gaming PC, sorry. And there we go. There's the game on the laptop. So I can obviously just go into a game here. And all again, guys, all this is really doing is it's actually taking the gaming screen, the gaming laptop, it's capturing the video for the game, and it's streaming it across to the laptop. And just carry on walking. Now, I can't do this, obviously, because I'm using the camera to actually...
So I'm just going to go back out so you can ba basically see both at the same time, right? If I move the, the mouse, move the mouse, here we go. Game is working fine. Shoot! Yeah! Best at game. I threw that into this video again because I wasn't too sure if I was clear enough and I explained the fact that you can play pretty much any game, even if you don't own it on Steam, but you own the original. You add it to your library and then you can use Remote Player to play it anyway. So that was it, me playing it on the laptop. Now, I want to try Hellblade because that's the game that I'm excited about. Now we're in Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Again, laptop, streaming off of the uh, gaming PC. Little bit of a difference in quality of graphics that's being rendered, but that's fine. The other thing I want to show you, which I think is quite cool, observe this white cable. I'm going to put the uh, camera down for you. Hopefully you guys can still see there nicely. That white cable is plugged into my controller. And I can actually use the controller on the PC that is using remote play to play the game. Now, I have no idea what I'm doing in this game. So I'm going to play this not like this. I'll probably play this um, by myself or I might stream this. If you're keen to see me stream a game like this, let me know. Anyway, that covers remote play on a phone, on a TV, and on a laptop. With all that done, guys, we've actually made it all the way to the end of this video, and I, I really do hope that it's actually been helpful in setting up remote play. I'm going to plug my controller in here, get nice and comfy underneath my blankets. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, why don't you tap that like button if you did. And uh, if you want to chat, you can always catch me in the comments. Happy to, to speak to you guys there. I'm going to go ahead and play some games now for a while. Uh, but I'll see you guys in another video soon. But until then, as always, live long and rock on. Is it just me? Or do, do these kind of scars actually make you look a little bit, a little bit on the fancy side? Hmm.